Hello there, I'm Karen Rose and we're doing a Q&A session. You all sent me questions and I'm going to answer them now. Um, I'm here um, at uh, on the Gulf Coast of Florida, so hopefully you can see the water behind me because it's really pretty. All right, so let's get started. Question number one, and this is from Anise E. How did you come to write this type of what I refer to as murder mystery romance? I love them so much. Well, thank you. Um, I didn't start out writing suspense or mystery. I started out writing women's fiction. And my first book turned into Don't Tell um, after about five iterations. Uh, but after the first four, it was still women's, women's fiction. And I, sent, and, I, and I had sent it into an agent who said, you have a very suspenseful voice because the only thing that was constant in all of versions was the prologue. And that was, if you've read Don't Tell, that's where Caroline is visited in the hospital by her evil husband who threatens that if she tells a soul that he's pushed her down the stairs that he'll finish the job and that's the only thing that remained constant in all the iterations and uh, she said do you have a very suspenseful voice have you ever thought about writing suspense and and I said no nope. so I thought well why not I like to watch it on TV and so I uh, I gave it a try and found my niche so that's how I came to be writing them but the romance was always going to be there because I'm a big fan of romance in all of its forms. The second question is from Jacqueline S. And Jacqueline asks, when you start writing a new series, e.g. my favorite, Baltimore, uh, do you know how many books will be in the series or does it depend on how the characters grow? Well, um, it depends on the series. In my very first books, I really didn't know that this whole writing thing was going to be, you know, a gig that took off. So I kind of wrote them as they came. Uh, my first actual series was The Vartanians, and that was Die For Me, Scream For Me, and Kill For Me. And it was supposed to be just one book, but it turned into a series. And uh, after that, um, I will never write a series by the seat of my pants again. I will always plot it out. And so the first series I ever plotted out was the Baltimore series. Um, and um, I had just changed publishers and they said well we would like you to go to a different city and start with you know new characters you can have a few crossovers and I had I was always been a big fan of Law and Order and I had in my mind that the the, the scene at the of the opening credits the final scene where Jack McCoy and his, whoever his ADA du jour is is walking towards the camera with Lenny Briscoe and whoever his partner du jour is and I always wanted to write that series with two cops and two lawyers and so that's what I proposed and I sat down and for the first time plotted the entire series before I started writing the first book um, so I knew it was gonna be four what I didn't realize was that I was gonna leave some stories untold so now it's six and uh, I think that that series is probably close to being done um, Cincinnati series I knew was gonna be four um, it might actually end up being, um, I know it's now it's going to be at least five, probably six. So I, so those expansions are due to the characters. I usually think I know how many characters are going to be there when I start, but it usually changes. Okay, question three. This is from Gina S. How long did it take you to write your first book? Well, that's a little misleading because I wrote that first book five, to, five separate times, not just, I mean, back in edited a little. I tore it apart and rewrote it five times. So that first book was several years in the making. Um, the second book I wrote in less than a month. And the third book I wrote in 17 days, which I've been trying to copy and recreate for like the last 15 years now. But uh, this first books, the, after, the, after I sold the first book, this, the books that came after it came pretty quickly. Now I would say it takes me probably two two and a half months to write the book and that's just the writing part that doesn't include the editing and the revising and all of that so that's about how long it takes the next question comes from Jean P I love your books thank you um, do any of your characters go in a different direction than you planned do you have an outline and then just flesh it out okay um, they all go in a different direction than I planned as I learn about them um, I'm, I'm always surprised at least once during the book and I'm like oh well that makes more sense now um, I think one of the ones that surprised me the most was Deacon Novak um, when he first came on the scene in uh, Joseph and Daphne's book which was did you miss me he was this kind of arrogant brash over-the-top 
character that almost reminded me of an anime um, with his you know long coat and the white hair and spikes and his different color colored eyes and I didn't know what his story was I truly didn't know why I had written him that way you know with the bright white hair and until I sat down and started writing his story and I realized that he had the same characteristics as many people in my own family. Um, he has uh, something called Wardenburg syndrome, which was what I was born with. So without even knowing it, I subconsciously gave him characteristics that I also have. Um, and my hairdresser is a very good hairdresser, otherwise my hair would be as white as Deacon's underneath. So um, I, but I didn't know it. So it was probably one of my biggest surprises was Deacon Novak. Um, but they all changed, they all, give me surprises at one point or another during the book. Okay, next question, Angie B. Um, I've seen Sandra Brown and Lisa Gardner's books on the Lifetime channel. Will any of your books ever make it to the small screen? Um, the answer to that question is I hope so. Uh, it's not a question of um, me just wanting it to be. It's a lot of things have to line up and I've, I've, uh, I would really like to see this. We almost did a series in Germany uh, for my German readers and it fell through at the last minute so so many things can go wrong but if you're ever on an airplane and you're sitting next to a producer make sure you drop my name because sometimes um, movie making is as simple as that this one comes from Mary C hi Mary C Mary C and I taught at the same school together for many years tell us how you prepare to write those Stevie C's and you're just naughty Mary C <laughs> um, I, I sometimes I will leave those scenes to where I can be very quiet because there's really not much worse than being in the middle of a steamy scene and having one of your children come in the room to look over your shoulder. Um, but uh, I, uh, I'll sometimes listen to very dramatic music. Um, sometimes I go and I find um, uh, scenes in books that I've loved that are steamy. It kind of just uh, sometimes I just sometimes it happens organically. So it kind of depends on me. It depends on the book. Um, but uh, I don't do anything special to prepare, if that was what you're intending, Mary C. Although I'm sure my husband would probably wish I, I did. All right, this next question is from Miriam. Miriam asks, is there any chance you'd come over to the Netherlands to visit so that your Dutch fans can have a chance to meet you and have their books signed? Well, I'm actually looking to come to the Netherlands in the autumn. So keep, keep uh, in tune with my uh, social media pages, Facebook and Twitter, and I'll announce it when I have more details. Um, I do love coming to the Netherlands and I love my Dutch readers, so thank you very much. This next question comes from Tony S. <laughs> Any bald-headed goatee, brown-eyed hunks coming in future books? Um, let's see, I'm, I'm trying to think of if that could be somebody I've already written or somebody you just want to have written. I have several bald characters but I'm not sure I have any that are bald with a goatee. Caitlin's taking this film. Caitlin, do I? I don't think you do. I don't think so. Um, I can give one of them a goatee if you'd really like, uh, but uh, I do know that Diesel is bald by choice, and he is going to have a book, and I'll be writing it as soon as I finish the one I just started. He's next in the queue. Um, I know that also that Agent Troy, Luther Troy, he also has, he's bald by necessity, because he just think he, he would prefer to be bald and have thinning hair and it, it looks cool. Some people tell me it looks like John Luke Picard, which I think he secretly enjoys. He will also have a book, um, but, uh, and I can give him a goatee if you'd really like. So if I didn't answer your question, email me, we'll figure it out. Cause I like goatees too. All right, this next question is from Sarah K. She asks, can't wait to find out who is up next. Are we off to a new city or back to an old one? Are we seeing all new characters? Or is a previous one going to make a comeback? Okay, so I've started writing two books a year. And the goal is to be writing um, a new series for one of the books every year. And then um, go back to a pre-existing series with the second book. So I've started to do that, for example, in the middle of my Cincinnati books. I've been back to Baltimore. Um, once with Monster and then once again with Death is Not Enough, which comes out this summer and that's Gwen and Thorne's story. So I'm trying to do two books a year here. So the answer to your question is my very next book, the one I'm just starting, is set in Sacramento, California with a mostly new crew. You will have met one of the characters, 
um, already who's a, a crossover from the Baltimore franchise. You meet her really, really quickly in, in the book that comes out this summer. Um, and uh, uh, then at the very last book, and I, I don't want to talk about it a lot because I don't want to jinx it, but I'll be bringing back uh, a character that um, everybody has been asking for. So um, the next series is set in Sacramento. The plan is to do one book in Sacramento for the next couple of years. And then my summer books will be to go back to series that I've just left. Next question comes from Nicole C. Will we see Danny Novak as the main character in the future book? I'd love to get to know her on a deeper level. Yes, you will. Um, I've been meaning to write Danny's book for several years now. Um, and she, she was actually supposed to have a different hero when I first considered her book. And then Diesel came along and I knew. Sometimes you just know that these two characters are meant to be together. So Diesel and Danny will have their book. Um, and I haven't started writing it yet. It's the next one I write after the one I'm, I'm working on now. So definitely you'll get to know Danny. Next question comes from Sharon C. Will Agent Troy get a happy ever after? He's one of my favorites. He totally will. And uh, I'm looking forward to writing his story. Um, I know exactly what it's going to be. And again, he's in the queue. So I'm just uh, trying to write fast so I can get to his story too. But he will have a story. Okay, this next question comes from Danielle P. Will we see young Tom again? Maybe in a book all his? Yes. And it will be in the near future. Um, that's all I really want to say because I don't want to jinx it. And I have been waiting. I get that quiz question a lot. You know, when is Tom going to get a book? I started getting this question when Tom was only like 16. So I wanted to wait till he grew up. And I keep a spreadsheet with how many book years have passed. So by the time he gets his book, he'll be 27, which I think is a, a, an acceptable age for a hero to have sex. Okay, this one comes from Karen R. In Leo's appearance in Luke and Susanna's story, there was a dark or maybe tragic history hinted at. Will we ever read about that? Um, there are so many characters that I left behind that I want to pick up. And that was one of the reasons I started writing two books a year because, um, you know, I'd write these series, these characters would talk to me. And Leo was not supposed to have a story in the original series. But like I said, that Vartanian series was kind of, I wrote on the seat of my pants and characters were popping up all over the place that I wanted to come back to. I would like to come back to his story. Not currently in the queue, but I actually know when his story is. So one of these days I'll sit down and write it. This one comes from Sarah M. Will we ever know what happened between Brie Franconi and Micah Barlow? I never stopped wondering. And I miss the Minneapolis gang. I miss them too. I love my Hat Squad books. Um, yes, you will. Brie's book is in the queue. Um, it'll be one of the summer books probably. I'm not sure when it'll come out, but yes, it's definitely on the list, and I definitely know what her story is. Okay, this next one comes from Rosie L. I ask every time, please give Gwen a happy ending. I can definitely tell you that's going to happen. Um, it comes out in May in New Zealand, um, Australia, the UK, um, uh, South Africa, and Ireland. I think I caught all those countries. Um, and uh, it'll come out in... I think June or July in the United States, maybe August. It's sometime in the summer in the United States. It's called Death is Not Enough, and it's Gwen and Thorne's book, and Gwen does indeed finally get her happy ending. This next one comes from Kirsten W. When is Tino getting his own book? Love to have some of the older characters come back with their own stories. Um, Tino is one of those ones I also want to go back and write his story. If you, have, if you don't remember, he's Vito's brother from Die For Me. He's the one that's the artist. He also makes a, a cameo appearance in Daphne's book, uh, Daphne and Joseph's book, um, Did You Miss Me, where he is uh, working with a young child to get a, 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 a sketch of the man that she saw murder someone. So yes, Tino is a great character and he's so pretty. So I do definitely want to write his story. He's a very romantic character. Okay, this one comes from Lauren T. Hi, I love all your books. Thank you very much. I was just wondering if you'll be writing a book about Rachel Reagan in the future. She's in my queue. Um, I'm not sure when I'm gonna, when I'm gonna get to it. It might be a couple years, because uh, the queue is quite long, but she's definitely in the queue. Like Tom Hunter, I've been waiting for her to grow up. I hope you guys have enjoyed this Q&A, and thank you very much for sending in your questions. Hopefully I answered them all. And um, if I didn't, we'll do another Q&A real soon. Bye.